all the smoke screens are coming down. This inequity is reflected in the levels of hate speech that is reported versus taken down automatically. According to a chart posted internally in July 2019 and leaked to NBC News, Facebook proactively took down a higher proportion of hate speech against white people than was reported by users, indicated that users didn't find it offensive enough to report it, but Facebook deleted it anyway. In contrast, the same tools that took down a lower proportion of hate speech targeting marginalized groups, including black, Jewish, and transgender, um, then was reported by users, indicating that these attacks were considered to be offensive, but Facebook's automatic tools weren't detecting those. The employee who posted the chart to Workplace, the internal Invert uh, the internal version of Facebook said that the findings showed that Facebook's proactive tools disproportionately defend white men. Facebook's pro person, uh, Ruchika Budhaja, excuse me for blundering up that name, said Wednesday that the company has since. Early 2018 considered treating different groups differently, as reported by Vanity Fair in February 2019. But that is, it is very difficult to parse out who is privileged and who is marginalized globally. And so the company has not changed its policies. The episodes detailed by current and Florida and former employees add to the growing scrutiny from both Facebook critics and the company's own workers over how seriously the company really takes allegations of racial bias on its platform. The company is in the midst of major advertiser boycott uh, that was sparked in part by social justice groups that believe it or believe it has not done enough to protect the users against uh, racial discrimination. Meanwhile, the social media giant is also under fire from Republican Party politicians who say it has a liberal tilt and is unfairly censored the conservative voices. Zuckerberg has tried to maintain that the platform is politically neutral and an advocate for free speech also while declining to make major changes. On Tuesday, the Wall Street Journal reported that Facebook was creating new teams to study racial bias on its platforms. Facebook employees here were already working on that topic say that for years the company disregarded their work and often instructed them to stop their research. So it's a bunch of hogwash. Around the same time as the Instagram episode, several pieces of research exploring race and racial bias on Facebook and Instagram were summarized and presented in a document to Zuckerberg and his inner circle, known as the M-Team. The team responded by instructing employees to stop all research and ethnicity and not to share any of their findings with others in the company. And that was according to uh, two current and one ex-employee. Schultz, who said he was part of the M team at the time, did not recall the specific communication, but said that some research was stopped over ethnics and methodology concerns. Other attempts to study racial and social bias or oppression on the platform were stopped at the internal research review process. Two current and three former employees said, so everybody's not lying. Researchers, many of them who have conducted academic research in social biases, were told that they were not allowed to ask users questions about their racial identity or anything else for that matter. Without permission to ask users questions about their identity, researchers, including those who conducted the Instagram study, 
relied on a proxy for race called multicultural affinity, which categorized users for advertising purposes based on their behavior according to their affinity for African American, Asian American, or Hispanic people in the United States. While the current and former employees acknowledged that this was not a perfect proxy for race, they had a few other options for attempting to understand racial bias on the platform. They were also frustrated by the idea that the company was comfortable in uh, delineating users on basis of ethnic affinity for advertiser purposes, but not for research purposes. Leadership wanted a standard and consistent approach to avoid bias, incorrect, and irresponsible work, and are proud we set it up to do, to uh, set up a project to do just that. After ProPublica investigation in 2016, Facebook prohibited advertising from targeting housing, employment, and credit ads based on what was called ethnic affinity to prevent potential discrimination through ads, Glanville said. It's not the first time, though, that Facebook executives have been accused of ignoring internal research, highlighting problems on the platform. A team at Facebook delivered a presentation in showing that Facebook algorithms were driving people apart by showing users increasingly divisive content, the Wall Street Journal reported in May, but senior executives, including Zuckerberg, shelved the research. Facebook responded to the article by pointing to its research to understand our platform impact on society so we continue to improve. This is not a new issue. Whether Facebook takes that research into account and has become a subject for discussion on a company's internal message boards, one engineer shared data showing that slant of Facebook's moderation practices and offered a pointed criticism of the company. He said, this is not a new issue. This, was, this has been going on for years. People are smarter, people smarter, hardworking, more patient, and more professional than I have fought to address it. Only PG shut down by myopic focus and bad metrics, the engineer wrote, according to screenshots of a post of the company's internal message boards. I've seen people be driven insane as leadership ignores them or outright shuts them down and commits us again and again to doubling down on this same path. The engineer quit the company the same day, according to leak posts and to two current employers, employees over the leadership's lack of action on the issue and accused Zuckerberg of making misleading statements about the company's handling of free speech um, and hate speech. For months, I've wrestled with myself, tried to convince myself that the work was definitely good, that it was all worth it, but I can't anymore, he wrote. The issues are too glaring. The failures of leadership are too grievous. I've lost too much sleep wondering how many people have an awful day that I've hurt just a little bit more by silencing their opportunity to vent with their friends or how many other tiny injustices I've inflicted in the course of following orders. The engineer did not respond to several uh, requests for comments. The mere fact that we have this research and continue to find the best way to conduct this and similar research is because we are trying to understand, Facebook said. These revelations echo the findings of an internal civil rights audit 
that Facebook commissioned in 2018 and was published um, and was published uh, this month. The audit report revealed that the company has not done enough to protect users from discrimination, falsehoods, and incitement to violence. I don't think they understand civil rights at all, said NAACP President Derek Johnson, who was among the civil rights leaders to meet with Zuckerberg and Sandberg in the week the audit was released. They have a blind spot to the needs to protect people, and unfortunately, far too often, they conflate issues related to civil rights with partisanship. Defeated hate isn't a partisan question. I agree. I really do. And um, that article was written by Olivia Solon uh, for NBC News. Facebook management ignored internal research showing biasness, racism, and current everything. Undercurrent, all that stuff that everybody's been saying. And they got the nerve to be putting people in jail every time you turn around. All right, I'll see you in the next video.